Hi, this lecture is all about mastering. So what mastering is, it's really the final touches for our mix. So first of all, I'd like to say, if your mix isn't really that good, go back and improve your mix rather than trying to master. Mastering really is just the icing on the cake, it's just the finishing touches, so just remember that first of all. When you are mixing and mastering your music, remember to listen to it on multiple platforms. So not just your studio monitors or headphones, hi-fi speakers, earbuds, your phone, your laptop speakers, because your audience and the people listening to your music won't exactly have the same setup as you. They might not have the same studio monitors in the same room or be in a studio or soundproof room. So the best thing to try and do is to try and get a good balance on all these different headphones and speakers. Okay, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to EQ, multiband compress, enhance the stereo image, and also limit our track. So the track I'm going to master is by a guy called 4Fox, and the track is called Rhino. Okay, so first of all, the thing we need to do is check the direct current, or DC. So if you have any errors or problems with any wiring or hardware, this can really show up in your track, and it can limit your headspace. But if it's mainly electronic and MIDI, generally you won't really have any DC, but let's just check this track. So let's double click on the track, and then go on File, and then go on Functions, and remove DC offset. Okay, great, there's no DC offset found. It's just to check, if your song is just MIDI or software instruments, you should be fine, but if you're working with a lot of external gear or a lot of audio tracks, I definitely would advise checking the DC current. Another thing is if you're mastering a whole album rather than a single, you should master all the tracks together. This way you'll get a more consistent sound. Obviously the tracks are going to be a lot different and might have different instrumentalists or different feels or vibes, but if you've got one track that's too loud or too quiet or too bright, it will sound a little bit peculiar. Okay, now let's trim our tracks. So at the start, I do want the track to come in straight away and have a slight automation of volume so it gradually comes in. And at the end, I normally wait about two or three seconds and then I cut the song. So first of all, let's go on our master output here, right click this and go and create track. And now we can actually automate the stereo out. And let's go on automation and change this to volume. Okay, we can kind of tell by our waves where the song comes in. I know this song, it has kind of a high pass section here and then the song really comes in about here. So this is more of a high pass intro. But let's just have a look. So looking at the waves, we can kind of tell it comes in about here, but let's just have a listen. So it really comes in about here. So it's there, okay. Let's zoom in a bit more. And we can also change the automation type to a curve. Let's just hear this. So I'd start the track about here. back slightly. Okay, and let's just trim the ending. And about there. Let's just zoom in. about here. Okay. There's silence there, so we don't really need the automation curve tool. Okay, great, so that's trimming the track. 
because it will be a bit embarrassing if you put your song online and there is a few seconds at the start of complete silence. A lot of people will also switch off, like physically switch the track off if it is just silent for a few seconds as well, because the first few seconds do really count. A lot of people also listen to music on their phone as well, which is in mono, so we need to just check the mono capabilities of our track. So let's just put some plugins on. Let's put them all on our stereo out. Okay, let's go to imaging and then directional meter. And all the way out like this is stereo. And the more you bring it in, the more mono it gets. So all the way like this is completely mono. Let's just get a loop going about here. So this, so that's mono. Let's make it stereo, or and let's make the spread a lot wider. We just need to check that there's no real phase problems in mono, but this sounds fine so far. Let's just get rid of this. That was just to check. Okay, let's now put on multimeter. It's under metering. And let's just play our track through this. The yellow is the peak levels, which is the highest point at that time. And the blue is the RMS, which is the overall loudness of the track at that point in time. Also, we need to make sure that the track isn't peaking, so we don't want anything in the red. Also, looking at this track, we can tell there's a lot of headspace, which means we can really push the volume up later on when we're limiting. Okay, let's drag this plugin down. Let's now put on a phase EQ. Basically, we want to roll off anything that is below about 25 hertz because the ear won't audibly hear this and sound systems won't really play it and it just muddies up the track really. So we just get rid of this and just roll it off below 25. So it's fine. On here, we can see the number, so 25. And make it tight. There we go, oh, like so. Okay, now we're going to add an exciter. This basically boosts the harmonies and we can make the song sound a lot brighter and have a lot more presence. So it's under specialized and then exciter. So color one is a lot brighter than color two and we can also choose the frequencies here. The best thing to do though is to just do it by ear. But remember, we don't want the track to change too much. We just want to make it brighter and have more presence and increase the volume. So try not to change the song too much. So this is with. And this is without. It's just a slight difference, but it does make the song a little bit brighter. Okay, next we're going to add a multiband compressor. In Logic, it's called a multipressor. Basically, it gives us four different frequency ranges and we can compress each range separately. Let's just open it up. It's under Dynamics and then Multipressor. Okay, so here is more the sub range and here is the, kind of the low mid and the high, the high mid and the high. You can change the gain or the volume here, similar to EQ. And we can also change the compression by moving the arrows down here. And we just need to make sure it doesn't go into the red. And also we don't want to compress too much or we might get rid of a lot of the dynamics of the track. 
We can also solo each section by clicking solo here. So the best thing to do is to solo each section and then hear it in the overall mix and try and get a nice balance. Remember, do not compress too much or you will lose a bit of the dynamic range in the song. Let's just have a play through this. And we can also increase the makeup gain by putting it louder up here. So this is with the multipressor, and this is without. So with, and without. The difference is very gradual, but in mastering it's all about the little gradual parts. Because we don't really want to change the song too much, we just want to improve it slightly and just boost the presence and boost the harmonies and boost the loudness of the song really. Okay, next is the stereo spreader, and that's in imaging. So this splits up the frequency range and you can hear them in your left and right speakers. But generally, I'd say you want to pan more the, for the higher frequencies and pan less for the lower frequencies. So let's just choose the higher frequencies and bring this down. Because you don't really want the bass panned out too far. As a general rule, you have the kind of lower frequencies panned in the middle and then you spread out as you get higher. So I generally have it about here. So this is with and without. This is a very gradual change as well. Okay, next is the adaptive limiter. This is the mastering limiter in Logic Pro 10. And it's under Dynamics Adaptive Limiter. So here we can see the input, reduction, and the output. So the input is before it goes into this limiter. Reduction is how much is being limited, and the output is now what the signal is like. It's gone through this limiter. The gain will increase the volume, and the out ceiling I always have on negative 0.1, just so it won't peak, just in case. We don't want to push the gain too much because if we do limit this too much, it will really lose a lot of the dynamics of the track, so just be careful of that. Of course, we want to make the track louder, but yeah, don't limit too much. This track has got quite a lot of headspace though, so we can push the volume quite a bit louder. There we can see the out ceiling gets up here, which is great. And the inputs here, and the reduction is 4.8, maybe a little bit lower, about here. Okay, so let's just try with and without. With. I do think we can boost a tiny bit of the bass on this EQ as well, but only a tiny bit. Just have to be careful as well. Just hear this back.
Okay, let's just hear this track without the plugins and with the plugins. And with the plugins. So yeah, the main difference you can hear is it's added a lot of presence and it's also made the track a lot louder. Okay, let's now just bounce this track. So we need to find our trims here and move the cycle range to our trims. And now let's bounce this, shortcut, command B. When we bounce, let's leave this as a PCM, as this will be non-compressed. And we can choose the file format as either AIFF or a wave. Let's choose a wave. For the resolution, let's leave it on 16-bit because iTunes and CD is 16-bit and sample rate, let's leave it on 44.1 because on CD and iTunes and other uploading sites, it compresses the sample rate to 441 anyway. So let's leave it on that. Let's leave the mode on offline and let's not normalize it because we've got a limiter on. Let's leave the file type as interleaved because we don't want this track split into two different tracks. We just want one track and divering Divering is when we convert the track from a 24 or a 32 bit down to a 16 bits. It will just make the process a bit smoother. So let's just choose PAL1, Divering. And now let's bounce this. Let's call it Rhino. So this is mastering in Logic Pro 10. Remember, you're not completely changing the track, you're just polishing the track up. So it's about adding harmonics and presence and color to the track, making it a bit brighter and also a bit louder. Hi, thank you for watching these videos. I hope you found them useful. If you want to take your learning to the next level, remember you can get my complete guide to Logic Pro 10 for only £10 or $10, depending where you are, which is actually 95% off. So just follow the links in the description if you want to learn even more with me. Thanks again.